All right, so today I want to talk about importing your past transactional data into CSU. And it's really critical uh, if you want to hit the ground running with some good data that you understand how all of these fields work and how the data is tracked and how our reports run in CSU. And what I tell a lot of people is when you're importing past data, it gets really tricky because the reason that you're implementing CSU is because you want to track data at a higher level. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of the data that is being tracked and that you'll easily be able to track going forward in CSU, you don't have readily on hand and ready to import in a way that makes sense or that looks good to a machine. Um, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get as much data as possible into the system without you pulling your hair out and really wasting a lot of time um, trying to find data that you, you may not even be able to track down. And so usually we're able to really get a good idea of closings, of volume of gross commission income over the past year, past two years, or you know, we can go back as far as you want. And especially if you've been tracking data in a, in a way that, you know, in an Excel sheet or, or in other programs that are built to basically track data on a line by line basis. If you'll notice here, um, you know, I have each transaction as its own line and I have some data pertaining to each of those transactions. Um, so the way you're gonna get to this spreadsheet that I'm looking at is uh, using our help base article. We have a download where you can download load this as an Excel file, um, or you can open up the Google Doc links and just go file and make a copy. And that will open up your own copy that you can start to play around with and copy and paste data in so that our team can import it into the system and make it look good. So if you'll notice here, uh, some of the fields that are really important have been highlighted. So these red fields, you're really gonna wanna make sure uh, to have a successful import uh, you're going to want to make sure that these red dates are filled out. Uh, and then we have some yellow ones that are also very important, and I'll explain why, because they drive some of the reporting in the CSU platform. So uh, these two examples here are just examples of what you know perfect data could look like. So you have your name of the agent, uh, the agent that closed the deal, the primary agent on the deal. Uh, what type are they, buyer or seller? Um, and if you, if you put buyer or seller typed out here, uh, it's no big deal. We can handle the formatting. We can make it look good in the system. Um, client first name and last name, that's important as well. If you have it, go ahead and throw it in there. Um, if you have it in a format that shows first name and last name combined, that's no big deal. Just paste it in uh, into this first name field, the first name and the last name, and we can figure out how to separate it later. That's, that's not a big deal either. Um, the total transaction amount, what did this property sell for? Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have that. How much commissions did your team total take home from this deal. So what, what were the gross commissions on it? And then how much money was paid to the primary agent on the deal? Now, a lot of people will come in and ask us, well, what about splits? How do I calculate if my team leader uh, and another agent on the team have a split on the commissions? That's really easy. You don't really need to do a lot of work there. Um, just go ahead and add in the gross commission as the total commissions, add the amount of money that was paid to the agent, uh, and then the import will take care of, uh, you know, basically our system will calculate what's the difference between gross commission. So gross commission minus paid income to agents, and that will give you your ultimate, um, your, your end team income number. So how much money went to the team? So to sum that up, gross commission minus the money paid to your agents, that gives you your team income. And that's how much money is going to your team. Um, if you have multiple agents outside of the team leader splitting a deal, uh, we have some fields down here where you can add in a secondary agent and their name and their paid income and uh, some other things. So if you need to use these, uh, maybe reach out to us, just ask us a question. It's, it's pretty simple if you get stuck here. Um, this credit means, you know, what percent of the deal is that agent getting credit for? Um, but for the most part, you're just worrying about what's the gross commission, how much of that was paid to the agent. And if you have those two numbers, um, you'll have some pretty good data in there. Uh, settlement date, you definitely got to have what day did the deal close. That's how our system knows, uh, you know, what month to allocate those, uh, those earnings to. Um, now, some of the really nice to have dates, if you have the date that you went on the appointment with uh, this lead, now that's pretty hard. Usually, you know, a lot of teams aren't tracking that. Um, but the reason it's important is because if you look back on your CSU dashboard, um, you know, if I come into my... Uh, if I come into my team dashboard, for example, and I look at my appointments over a year span or over a month span or, or whatever I'm looking at, these listing appointments met or these buyer appointments met, what it's actually looking at is how many clients have 
a field uh, that's that's uh, populated for uh, appointments mail. And so that's where this data is coming from is in this import, having that first appointment date. If you don't have it, you have two options. Just leave it blank and you'll just know that going forward, that's something that you're gonna have. Um, another option is just to estimate. So we'll have a lot of teams that will estimate. Uh, and maybe they have the date that the deal went under contract. That's something that's pretty commonly tracked. And so they'll say, okay, I have the settlement date. I have the under contract date. I'm just gonna estimate that this, uh, this sign date is one week before the under contract date. And I can just do that by saying equals this minus, uh, minus seven. Right, and it's gonna subtract it seven days from there. Um, and then I can double click here and, and drag that formula down or you know, whatever I need to do to, to populate that basically. Um, and then I could say, okay, well the first appointment was probably a week before my sign date. So I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna do equals this field minus seven. And that will give me an idea of my first appointment date. So uh, these are kind of ways you can estimate if you don't exactly have the numbers on hand, it will at least give you a baseline. It won't be 100% accurate. But once again, that's why you're rolling out CSU is so that you have this stuff going forward in a way that's much easier to track and that ties into all your dashboards. So you have options there. Uh, this listing date, that's the data that actually hit the market. Um, so you can go ahead and add that as well if you want. Uh, not extremely important. It's more important that we have the settlement date and this under contract date. So uh, with that, if you focus on these and then another really big field to add in is this lead source. That's something that's very commonly tracked. So you can uh, paste that in for each of your closed deals. Uh, you know, if, if you can do pretty well on these red fields and these yellow fields, uh, you're going to have good data and you're going to come in and you're going to be able to see and say, okay, you know, show me my snapshot and at least get a really good look of, you know, what's my volume, what's my uh, volume in units over the past year and then be able going forward to track those against each other and see how well they match up, how much your team is growing or the seasonality of your team. Um, if you have a lead source, you'll be able to come in and run some really cool lead source reports and say, uh, you know, what lead sources did we most work with over a certain period of time um, and be able to uh, import that. So once again, just can't stress enough. Uh, don't rip your hair out over this. Don't spend three weeks trying to get every little piece of data that you can. Uh, but the more data that you can have and, and more data that you can put into this template, uh, the more that you'll have to, to hit the ground running with in the system. So. Definitely very important to get it imported. And uh, as soon as you have this template ready, shoot it over to our team, we'll review. Uh, we'll take a look at it, make sure everything looks good. Maybe offer some tips for making the data look even a little bit better. Um, and we'll get it in the system. And we look forward to working with you more on that.